Welcome to the Optics RTN 950 Hardware at a Glance. You can click a specific button to learn more. The Optics RTN 950 is Huawei's integrated IP microwave transmission system. Integrating the TDM, hybrid, packet and routing platforms, it provides a seamless microwave transmission solution for mobile communications or private networks. The RTN 950 uses a split structure and consists of an IDU 950 and ODUs. An IDU 950 connects to an ODU using an IF cable. The IDU 950, which is the indoor unit of the RTN 950, performs service access, multiplexing, IF processing, system communication and control. The IDU 950 is a 2U chassis with pluggable boards. Air is let in on the left side and out on the right side of the chassis to dissipate heat. Boards supported by the IDU 950 include the system control, switching and timing board, IF board, Ethernet interface board, TDM interface board, auxiliary interface board, E1 port conversion board, power board and fan board. This makes the device suitable for a variety of scenarios. CST is a TDM system control, switching and timing board that provides system control, TDM cross connection and clock processing functions. CSH is a hybrid packet system control, switching and timing board that provides system control, TDM cross connection packet switching and clock processing functions. CSHU, CSHUA is a hybrid packet routing system control, switching and timing board. It also provides system control, TDM cross connection, packet switching and clock processing functions. The CSHU, CSHUA board supports L3 VPN. IF1 is an SDH IF board that provides one IF port to support SDH PDH microwave. IFU2 IFX2 is a universal IF port that provides one IF port to support integrated IP microwave. IFX2 supports XPIC. ISU2 ISX2 is a universal IF board that provides one IF port to support integrated IP and SDH microwave. ISX2 supports the XPIC function. ISV3 is a versatile IF board that provides one IF port to support integrated IP and SDH microwave. ISV3 supports the XPIC function. ISM6 is a new generation IF board that provides two IF ports to support integrated IP and SDH microwave. ISM6 supports intraboard XPIC. EG4, EG4P is a four port GE interface board. EG4P supports power over Ethernet. EM6T, EM6F, EM6TA, EM6FA is an FE GE interface board that provides four FE electrical ports and two GE ports. EM6D is a six port Ethernet processing board that supports the super dual band feature. It provides two 10 GE, two 2.5 GE ports and two GE ports. EMS6 is an FE GE EOSDH processing board that supports the switching function. It provides two GE ports and four FE ports. EFP8 is an 8 port FE EOPDH processing board that provides eight FE ports. SL1D SL1DA is an STM1 interface board that provides two STM1 optical electrical ports. SP3S and SP3D are E1 tributary boards. SP3S provides 16 75 ohm or 120 ohm E1 ports. 
SP3D provides 32 75 ohm or 120 ohm E1 ports. CQ1 is a channelized STM1 interface board that provides four STM1 optical electrical ports. ML1 and MD1 are smart E1 tributary boards. ML1 provides 16 75 ohm or 120 ohm smart E1 ports. MD1 provides 32 75 ohm or 120 ohm smart E1 ports. AUX is an auxiliary and management interface board. It provides an odor wire phone port, a synchronous data port, an asynchronous data port, and a four input, two output external alarm port. TCU6 is a six port E1 port conversion board. It allows for conversion between DB44 ports and RJ45 ports. PIU is a power interface board. The RTN950 supports two PIUs, each of which receives one channel of negative 48 volts or negative 60 volt DC power input. Fan is a fan board for heat dissipation of the chassis. The ODU, the outdoor unit of RTN 950, converts the frequency and amplifies the power of signals. This video uses XMC2 and XMC3 ODUs as an example. An XMC2 ODU can operate in IS2 or IS3 mode. It provides an antenna port, an IF port, an RSSI test port, and a ground screw. The XMC3 ODU is a new generation ODU with a compact size, lower power consumption, and higher modulation schemes. The antenna port of the XMC3 ODU can adapt to the polarization direction of the antenna and does not need to be adjusted. The XMC3 ODU operates in IS3 or IS6 mode. It provides an antenna port, an IF port, an RSSI test port and a ground screw. An ODU connects to an antenna in direct or split mounting mode. The direct mounting mode is usually used when a small diameter, single polarized antenna is used. If one ODU uses one antenna, the ODU can be directly mounted to the back of the antenna. If two ODUs share an antenna, a hybrid coupler must be added between the ODUs and the antenna. An ODU can also be directly mounted to a small or medium diameter dual polarized antenna. Two ODUs are mounted to an antenna using an OMT. The OMT is installed similar to the hybrid coupler. The split mounting mode is generally adopted when a large diameter single or dual polarized antenna is used. The ODU, hybrid coupler or OMT, is mounted on a pole using an ODU mounting bracket and connects to an antenna using a flexible waveguide. A hybrid coupler is the combination of an RF signal combiner and splitter and is used to install two ODUs onto the same antenna. It supports various system configurations, such as 2 plus 0 single polarization, 1 plus 1 HSB, and 1 plus 1 FT. Each end of a link requires two ODUs and a single polarized antenna. An OMT, short for Orthogonal Mode Transducer, is used to directly mount two ODUs with different polarization directions onto the same antenna. The OMT also supports different system configurations. For example, 2 plus 0 dual polarization. Each end of a link requires two ODUs, an OMT, and a dual polarized antenna. A dual polarized coupler directly mounts four ODUs onto a dual polarized antenna. It supports 4 plus 0, 3 plus 1, and 1 plus 1 XPIC configurations. Each end of a link requires four ODUs, a dual polarized coupler, and a dual polarized antenna. 
Space Diversity uses two antennas at different heights to receive the same RF signals. The receive end selects the channel with better quality. This reduces the impact of multipath fading on signals. Each end of a link requires two ODUs and two single polarized antennas. Determining the installation position. Installing floating nuts. Installing the RTN 950. Install the chassis in the specified cabinet position and secure the four screws on both sides of the chassis. cable is completely inserted, push the power terminal latch to secure the power cable. Installing a board. Use a Phillips screwdriver to loosen the screws on both ends of the filler panel. screws at both ends of the filler panel and remove the filler panel smoothly. Hold the ejector levers on the front panel of the board with both hands and pull the ejector levers outward to make the ejector levels form a 45 degree angle with the panel. Slide the board along the guide rail of the slot until the board cannot slide forward. Press the two ejector levers of the board inwards and tighten the screws on the panel. Power on. 